Protectors of the Suna Suna Protectors of the Suna Alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah. Welcome to our hadith class. And this is the class wherein we are discussing the hadiths that are from in the book uh, compiled by Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Atli entitled Once Upon a Time. And these are all hadiths in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam shared with us that are stories of the, what happened to the people who came before us. Lessons to be learned and uh, based on what happened to the people who came before us. You can order this book from Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Atli's website. It's on there. It's only $2. It's once upon a time. Just simply go to atleonline.net and click on this book and you can order it for just $2. And with that said, let's put the hadith that's up for discussion tonight on the screen. And uh, I thought I, I didn't, wait a minute, I thought I, just give me a second. Oh God, this hurts so bad. This is really hurting. Give me a second guys. Okay, so here is, uh, inshallah, let me open it up now uh, so everyone can see. And uh, this uh, book, I mean, this hadith, uh, Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Atli entitled The Night Journey. Okay, and uh, it, it, this is not based on the prophet's uh, uh, mirage, not really, but it's called the night journey. And you will understand why as we go over uh, this hadith. And again, you can buy this book. There's the picture of the book. You can go to www.atleyonline.com and the book will be there. And it's only $2. There's no excuse for any, every Muslim listening to me to not own this book. So we're going to go over a hadith. And this hadith can be found in Sahih Bukhari. The source of this hadith is Sahih Bukhari. And let us review it. Well, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to meet uh, after leading the companions in the Fajr prayer. He would then ask his companions uh, to tell them, uh, tell him of any dreams they had. Because one of the gifts that Allah gives to his prophets is they have the ability to interpret dreams. So every morning after the Fajr prayer, the prophet would ask, is there anyone who has a dream that needs to be interpreted? So people would convey their dreams to him. Well, one day, uh, 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 the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam decided to share a dream that he had with the people. He said, let me share this dream with you. He said, last night, two people came to me in a dream and they woke me up and they told me to accompany them. These two people were angels. These were angels in the disguise of two men. So the prophet accompanied them in his dream and they came across a man who was lying down on the ground on his back and another man was standing over his head holding a big rock. 
And then the man that was holding the rock would take the rock and throw it at the man's head. And the, the rock would bash the man's head in and then it would roll away. And the man who threw the rock would run after the rock and pick it up and go back to the man who was laying on the ground. And by the time he returned back to the man, the man's head would have been as it was before it was bashed in. And the man kept doing this over and over and over again. And the prophet told the two men who were with him, SubhanAllah, who are these two men? But instead of answering him, they told the prophet, let's continue on our journey. So they continued on. And they happened to come upon another man who was also lying on the ground. And he was lying flat on his back. And another man was standing over him, but instead of holding a rock, this man was holding an iron hook in his hand. And the man would go to the man who was on the ground and he would put the hook on one side of the man's mouth and rip that side of his face off from the face to the back of the neck. And then he would tear the man's nose off from the front to the back and his eye off from the front to the back. And then he would go to the other side of the man's face and repeat the same thing. And every time this man's face was ripped apart, it would grow back together. It was a gruesome sight, a gruesome thing to see. So the prophet asked the two men who were with him, he said, SubhanAllah, who are these men? What is going on here? And again, the angel said, don't question, let's continue on. So they continued on. And then they happened to come across an oven, an oven that was made of clay. And inside the oven, you could hear a lot of screaming, a lot of noises, a lot of voices. So the prophet looked inside the oven and he found within the oven naked men and naked women and a flame of fire was underneath them, burning them. They were being barbecued by this fire and they were screaming and crying in agony. So again, the prophet said, he asked the two men with him, who are they? What happened to them? And again, the angels refused to answer, but instead told him, let's continue about our business. So they continued on and they came to a river. But this river was not a river, as we know, of water. This river was red like blood, pure red. And inside that red river was a man swimming and another man was standing on the banks of the river holding rocks in his hand. And while the other man was swimming, the man with the rocks would walk close to him. And then the swimmer would open his mouth and the man with the rock would throw the stone into the man's mouth and he would keep on swimming. And the man kept, they kept repeating this over and over again. And so the prophet asked his two companions again, who are these people? And again, the angel said, let's just keep going. So they continued until they came upon another man. This man was so ugly. He was the ugliest man you'd ever seen. And he was sitting beside a fire and he was kindling the fire. And so the prophet asked the men with him, he said, who is that ugly man? They said, don't ask, keep going. So they continued to walk until they reached a garden of deep green grass. And it had all kinds of beautiful spring colors in this garden. And in the middle of the garden, was standing a very tall man. And the prophet said he was so tall that he, the prophet could hardly see his head. And around him were many children, more children than he'd ever seen in his life. And they were gathered around this tall man. So the prophet asked his companions, who is he? 
And who are those children? And again, they said, let's continue on. So they continued on their journey until they came to a large garden. And this garden was larger than any garden you can imagine. And the angels who he were with, they told him, I want you to walk up this hill. So he walked up the hill. And the prophet said, as they walked up, they reached a city that was built of gold and silver. And they went to the gate of this city. And the, 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 the angels asked the gatekeeper to open the gate. And the gate was opened and they entered and they found within that city men, men, men who had one side of their bodies beautiful as any beautiful person you could imagine would look. And the other side of their body was ugly. So they were half beautiful and half ugly. And the two angels looked at the men and ordered that those men be thrown uh, into the river. And behold, there was a river flowing across the city and the water in that city was white like milk, okay? So the men obeyed the angels. They went and threw themselves in the river. And then they, after throwing themselves in the river, they climbed out and the ugliness, the ugliness, the ugliness of their bodies had disappeared. And they were beautiful, handsome men now. And that's when the angels decided to explain to the prophet what was going on. They said, this place that we are at right now, this is the garden of Eden. And that place over there is your home. So the prophet said he looked up and behold, he saw a palace like a white cloud. They said that palace is your home. And the prophet said to them, may Allah bless you both. Let me enter into it now. That's how beautiful it was. But the angel said, as for now, you cannot enter it, but you will enter it one day. And that's when the prophet asked the angels, he said, I have seen so many wonderful things tonight. What did all these things mean? And the angel said, we will tell you what they meant. He said, they said, as for the first man you saw whose head was being crushed with the rock, he is the symbol of a person who studies the Quran and then doesn't recite it, nor does he practice it. And he sleeps and doesn't even make his prayers. So his punishment is that his head will be crushed over and over and over again with the stone as you've seen. He said, as for the man who you saw, whose face was being ripped apart, he symbolizes a person who leaves his home in the morning and causes so much harm by spreading gossip and spreading lies about others. So such a person's punishment will be that their face will be ripped off over and over and over again. And they said, as far as the naked man, the naked men and the naked women who you saw in the oven, they are the adulterers and the fornicators of this world. And the man whom you saw swimming in the river who was swallowing stones, this is a man who used to indulge in interests. And the ugly looking men who you saw near the fire, that was Malik. And who is Malik? Malik is the angel who is the guardian over hell. And the tall man whom you saw in the beautiful garden, that is prophet Abraham. And the children around him, those are the children who die upon the belief of Islam. So in other words, any children, any children, any children who die before the age of puberty, you know, 
they automatically go to paradise and they are cared for by prophet Abraham and his wife, Sarah. And so when the angels explained uh, this to the prophet, uh, 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 and the prophet explained this to the companions, some of the companions said, oh, prophet of Allah, so what about the children who die of the unbelievers? Do they go to hell? The prophet said, no, even the children who are below the age of puberty, whose parents are pagans, Allah doesn't hold them accountable for what their parents did. So they die innocent. They die in submission to Allah and they too will enter paradise. And then, uh, and then uh, the prophet said, the proof of that is the fact that when I told you guys about the men who were half ugly and half handsome, those men were men who did bad deeds, but then they repented and followed the bad deed up with the good deed. So Allah forgave them. That's why they were told to jump into the river of milk because by jumping into the river of milk, they were forgiven of the bad uh, deeds that they did, you know, because of their repentance. So again, this is a wonderful, wonderful story, you know, uh, that the prophet shared with us. It's a dream that he had, okay? This didn't happen on his night journey. The night journey was not a dream. The night journey was a real event, but this was a dream that the prophet had one night in which Allah shared with him knowledge of as to what happens to people who don't practice this religion. What happens to people who lie and cause problems for others? You know, what happens to people who fornicate, adulterate, who don't cover their bodies? And by the way, the women and men in that oven, these are the women that didn't wear hijab. So you women out there who don't cover your bodies when you leave the house, you can look forward to that oven, being in that oven, okay? So uh, I'm gonna stop right here for today. Uh, it's a wonderful hadith. If you guys have any questions or comments, inshallah, uh, you can uh, type them on the screen or whatever. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, ashadu an la ilaha ila anta, astaghfiruka wa tubu Any comments or questions about this wonderful, wonderful hadith? Any questions? As Oh, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is a powering hadith. It goes beyond wonderful. It goes, it's, it's powerful because there are so much, so many intriguing things that I know I would have to. I would have to read it over and over and over again. And just hearing it once wouldn't be enough for me because it's just so much to learn from it about the people and about what happens when, even though this wasn't on his night journey, it was, it was, it was, Allah was still revealing to him what happens when you do certain things and what will be the consequences. Exactly. And it's something that you should always remember. Exactly, guys. There's consequences. The choices that we make in this world today will determine what our fate will be when we're in that grave. You know? So that's why we have to be more considerate and more cautious in the choices that we make. And to have knowledge and not implement it, this is a terrible thing. Yes, go ahead, Sister Sahara, go ahead. Oh, um, I was gonna say, this is a really good story. Um, I've heard like part of it, but I didn't really um, hear the whole thing. So thank you so much. Um, 
And I also want to say it's kind of like eye opening too, because um, we think that we're going to live forever sometimes and we never really take anything seriously. But when Allah describes the things of the hereafter, it makes you think like, oh my God, like I got to get my life together. Like this is no joke. And Allah details it so we can like, you know, fear him and also like think about the hereafter because the hereafter is forever. And it's the best place on earth. Well, not earth, but it's where you want to be. And yeah, I have like no words because that's how amazing it was. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Yes, go ahead, Sister Aisha. For me, I would say, uh, like, you know how you said, well, you, you showed us all of those, um, those people that sinned and it just shows, you know, to be aware that, you know, no matter the sin you do, you might think it's small, but you yes. know, when you die, it will be bigger than, you know, the punishment will be bigger. So it just makes you think, hey, you know, before you backbite or before you, you know, do all those sins, you know, it might like, yeah, it might be smaller, but it's going to be more worse when you die. So it just makes me reflect, talk, you know, to shut my mouth when I need to shut my mouth and all that stuff. Exactly. Alhamdulillah. Yes. Go ahead, Sister Anissa. Alhamdulillah. You know, when we listen to the hadiths as serene as this one, as clear as this one, you know, only a believer can really believe what we're being taught. If you're a disbeliever, there's no way you're going to believe it. It just seems unimaginable that something like that would actually happen. And Allah would reveal that to Prophet Muhammad so we would know to scare the fool out of us so that we can live, learn our religion, live our religion, and believe the unseen, because we don't see it, we don't know it, but we've been told it. Right. And it's so important, I think, for us to understand that this is a way of life that Allah has created for us. The bad goes with the good, the good comes with the bad, and we have to know how to separate it in order to be good all the way, because Allah don't accept us unless we're doing it 100%. Subhanallah, because we got to be in paradise or the hellfire. So you got to believe what you are actually being doing. Subhanallah, may Allah help us yeah. and protect us from all the bad stuff that others may have to go through and that we may never go through this. I couldn't take it. Yeah, me neither. Sister May Leon, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, this story truly is a journey. I think it's so interesting because, like, while you're listening to the story you can kind of like put yourself in the prophet prophet's perspective when you're like going through life like a law like shows you certain things or like takes you to certain places and you're like what's going on like i don't understand how that you know you don't understand at the moment but eventually like well he got ex explanation from the you know the angels but we normally don't get that eventually like things start to add up i just that's just what i got from it <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Yeah, guys, it's something that we have to be mindful of, that there's consequences, you know, and the good thing about Islam, another one of the good things about Islam that makes it different than Christianity and Judaism, Allah tells us what a lot of the consequences are. Like in this hadith, he tells us the consequences of learning the religion and not practicing it. He tells us the consequences and the punishment, you know, for lying and slandering people's character. He tells us the consequences, you know, uh, for, for doing these things, you know, uh, uh, and also he tells us the hope, gives us the hope too. how, yes, you know, nobody's perfect. But if you turn to him and repent, he'll take all those bad deeds away and replace them with what is good. He'll take that ugliness away from you and make you a more handsome, better person. So that's what another one of the things that makes Islam stand out over those other ways of life. You know, because Allah tells us what's wrong. He tells us a lot of times why it's wrong. He tells us how to stay away from doing the wrong. And then he tells us, if you're too stupid to listen to me, this is going to happen as a result. But we still don't take heat. You know, I'd like to thank everybody for joining and participating in this session of our Hadith class. Tomorrow is Wednesday. And excuse me, I'm going to have to stand up because I'm going to turn the camera off. <laughs> Oh, hold on, please, guys. Oh, my God, it hurt. Tomorrow is Wednesday. Oh, God. So let me remind everyone that we have my class at 6 
And we also have Brother Mukhtar's class, the story of the companions that will be tomorrow at seven. And then we'll have this Hadith class again to, uh, tomorrow at 11. So please guys, we got the classes back on track. Uh, uh, even though I'm in a lot of pain, I'm still struggling to, you know, to keep these classes going because they keep me from giving into that depression. So please, guys, join us and support our website. So, Supanakala Humawabi Hamdika, Ashadu Anlai, Lahaila Anta, Stakta Rukawatu.